But as an entire nation mourns the loss of those who were on board the ill-fated ferry, Korean authorities are broadening their investigation on what exactly happened on the day of the ferry capsize and who is responsible for this man-made disaster. Now, several people, including the captain and the crew of the Seolo ferry, have been arrested. And yesterday, one of the arrested crew members said the crew did make an attempt to release some of the life floats but failed because it was impossible to get near them. But screenshots from the scene of the disaster appear to counter those claims. And for this and more, we go live to our Nai Hyung Young at the News Center. Hyung Young. Well, Kan Young, this is what a crew member said yesterday. Let's take a look. <laughs> We tried, but couldn't get near the life floats. We really did try, but it was so slippery that we couldn't get there. Now, but the pictures released suggest otherwise. Now, while the crew members are busy getting on to rescue boats, a Coast Guard official is hanging tight onto the guardrail, trying to release the life floats, and he succeeded. The official was able to kick two of the life floats into the sea. There were more than 40 life floats on the Sewolho ferry, and these pictures will likely make people ask even more uh, what if questions. Also, the now arrested crew members claim the ship was listed. 90 degrees when the crew were told to evacuate, but those pictures show that it was only listed about 50 degrees. So you can imagine how this will feel even more anger, not only among the affected family members, but also among the general public as well. Well, definitely. So now um, more crew members are now in custody, right? That's right. Uh, 11 out of the 15 crew members who all survived now face criminal charges. Among those is, of course, the captain, Captain Lee Jun Suk. He is charged with five offenses, including negligence of duty and violating ship crew law, which mandates the crew to secure the safety of all passengers in emergency situations. The joint investigation team, composed of prosecutors and police officers, are also looking into charging some of the crew with homicide by omission. That's when inaction of the defendant results in someone's death. Investigators say some of the crew have shown signs of regret admitting to their mistakes and saying in hindsight they should have taken rescue measures. And as for the finding, uh, the exact cause of the sinking investigators are planning on running a simulation, but experts say it will take at least six months because basic data, including the vessel's floor plans and speed, will have to be gathered before they build a model ship, and all of that will only be possible after the ship is salvaged. Right, the, and the investigation process will be highly or closely watched by the Korean public here. But, uh, hyun it's not just the crew members that are in prosecutor sites. Uh, we have been talking about the investigation ongoing on the ferry's operator, the Cheonghaejin Marine Company. That's right. The special prosecutorial investigative team raided some 10 offices and homes of the practical owner of the operator, Yu Pyeong-un, earlier today. Prosecutors are closely looking into whether Yu and his two sons have evaded taxes or embezzled funds by making illegal foreign transactions. And Yu's two sons are the biggest shareholders of the ferry operator's holding company, and the Yu family is said to own assets worth more than $230 million, excluding debt and assets kept outside of the country. The National Tax Service yesterday also launched a special probe into four firms that are closely working with Cheong Hejin Marine Company. Dozens of personnel, including you and the two sons, are currently under a travel ban imposed by the prosecution. And I will bring you more updates later on our newscast.